This is the full in-depth review of the TaylorMade M4 irons. In this video, we're gonna see if the technology that TaylorMade claim from Ribcore, giving us more ball speed for speed slots, face slots, are they giving us any more forgiveness? I'm testing the four iron, the seven iron, and the pitching wedge on GC Quad with Pro V1s, and not only that, taking out on the golf course and seeing out actually games in a real game situation. I'm then gonna give the, all the data, all the information, answer your questions and then give you my final conclusion of the new TaylorMade M4 irons. The new TaylorMade M4 irons, these are the kind of oversized, the bigger version of the M3 irons, packed with similar pieces of technology. So TaylorMade are claiming this new rib core is giving extra forgiveness on off-centered hits. You've got the face slots and the speed slots. Uh, these are Things that we've seen before with TaylorMade irons going back from almost RSI one days. Um, we've seen these feature in M1 and M2. And really the only big difference here now is the rib core technology across the back is they're claiming is giving more stability, therefore more ball speed and more forgiveness. These irons are strong lofted. So I've got the 7.4 and the pitching wedge. The 7 iron is an incredible 28.5 degree of loft. So it is strong. Um, pitching wedge is 43.5 and the four iron is a staggering 19 degrees loft, uh, which really is almost like a two iron in my books. So these irons are packed full of power, but that power is really, in my opinion, coming from the extra uh, strengthening of the lofts. Now they do look very smart and interesting. I think these actually almost look more uh, filled with technology, packed full of features than the M3 irons, but these actually come in at a lower price point. They're still expensive. These are coming in at £750 for a full set or $900. So they're still at the top end of the spectrum, but roughly £100 slash $100 cheaper than the M3 irons. And for no real reason, I don't see there being massive benefit reasoning for why these are cheaper at all. Let's have a look at some of the performance when I tested these on GC Quad with Pro V1s. And what we see when I tested these is I was expecting these to go a long way. And really, I wasn't massively disappointed. If I look at the seven iron distances, and again, this is 28.5 degrees of loft, so mega, mega strong. This was carrying 188 yards on the fly. The flight was penetrating. The ball flight was coming out hot. Uh, I didn't feel like the, there was a lot of spin on the shots, and that backed up with the data. The spin on the 7 iron was less than 5,000, which is low. But really, with the loft, I'm expecting it to be that low. However, when we look at the peak height and the descent angle, the peak height was higher than the M3 at 33 yards up in the air, and the land angle was 45.5 degrees. So there's some potential that these clubs can still stop on the green, even though they are coming out with no spin and they're going a long way. I'm going to see if that's the case out on the golf course when I took them out. I hit the four iron as well. The four iron was carrying at 220 yards. Uh, descent angle was coming in at 36.8 and 27 yards up in the air. So a little bit flatter flight. And again, typical low spin, 3,000 RPM spin. You see that sometimes with like drivers or three woods. To get that with a, a four iron. But again, we're talking about a 19 degree four iron. It's going to go a long way. The fear is for this set of golf clubs is the four iron... For a higher handicap of golfer, which really these clubs are aimed at, can they create enough power to get a 19 degree four iron up in the air? There's more weight across the bottom of the golf club, but I still wouldn't say they were particularly easy on the longer hits. And some of the shots I hit with the M4 iron didn't really go great, and some of them felt pretty awful with the four irons, both of the M3 and the M4. Um, I saw some shots as well with the pitching wedge. Uh, Pitching wedge is 43.5 degrees of loft. I was carrying this at 141 yards, which again is a big hit. Uh, peak height was 32 yards up in the air. The descent angle was 50 degrees pretty much. And the spin rate on the pitching wedge was still pretty low at only 8,000. The only thing that's going to make that ball stop on the green is the descent angle and the peak height, not so much the spin. The spin numbers are low on these clubs, which really are just a factor in that the fact they've got low lofts, and that's the big thing. If we look at some of the shots that I hit, seven iron, this was shot number four. This was really nice, absolutely flush shot number four. And shot number five, I nearly actually hold it. 
I would see a tendency just to go in a little bit too far to the left with a lot of the clubs. Um, certainly the harder I hit them, I seem to be getting different lie angles. The shaft might have just been a little bit softer than what I'm used to. And I was getting some shots starting to peel too far to the left because the toe started to go down a little bit. Um, one of the interesting ones is that on the pitching wedge, because of the loft, I was expecting it to carry nearer to 150 yards, but that wasn't the case and it kind of averaged at 141. And when we look at that spectrum then between 188 with the 7 iron and 220 with the 4 iron, there's not much of a gap to squeeze a 5 and a 6 iron in there. I mean, that gap is what, 30 yards. So to be able to get a couple of, you're looking 15 yards between each club on the long end. If we go the other side of the spectrum from 100, 188 yards with a seven down to 141, I mean, that's nearly 50 yards and you've only got two clubs. You know, you've only got a eight iron and a nine iron to cover effectively almost a 50 yard spectrum, which is you're putting a lot of pressure on your eight and nine irons to get distance. And then if you did hit your wedge that far, how many wedges do you need? How many gap wedges? How many sand wedges, lob wedges are you going to need to carry? Because in my opinion, hitting a wedge that far is always going to have issues at the short end of the bag. When I was hitting the shots, I, I did like the, the feel. I wouldn't say they're the greatest sound. They're a little bit louder, a little bit clicky. But I did actually like the feel and I felt like they were not soft, but similar to the M3 iron, they were receptive enough. They had a nice feel off the face. Um, not perfect to my liking, but not massively offensive either. So numbers on GC Quad and Pro V1s were pretty good. I wasn't blown away, but some bad shots I hit well, and some of the good shots were fantastic, and I expected them to be long. That's what these clubs are designed to do. They're designed to go long. So I took these clubs out on the golf course. And again, I've only got four, seven and pitching wedge, but I wanted to test them in different situations. Uh, this is one of the tee shots I hit with the four iron. And the first shot, I hit a little bit toe it. It got down there. It wasn't great. It wasn't pretty, but it did find the fairway. And in the second shot, I absolutely crushed. Right out of the middle, great flight, great ball flight, penetrating. Again, what I would expect to see more from a two iron or a three iron, but got me in prime position. As I got down there, to my surprise, the one from the toe, the first shot, had actually tra traveled further. It was still in the fairway, but left side of the fairway. But the one that I hit flush was right in the middle of the fairway. So I was really shocked with that completely because I really thought the first one was going to be way shorter and way further to the left. Then I hit from that those spots that I hit seven irons into the green. The flag was at about 180 pin back left. I hit the seven irons, crushed both of them. They came out visually very high, visually with no spin. So I was a bit scared whether, whether they were going to hold the green and both shots held the green. One of them landed just short and hopped on and the other one landed on a little bit of a ridge, hopped on and then spun off to the left-hand side. No fear that they wouldn't stop. So that was a good sign because really height and descent angle overweighed how little spin you get on these clubs. So, so far, so good out on the golf course. I then hit some of the pitching wedges on the next hole. One out the real deep stuff, and then one out the semi stuff, the semi grass. And actually, both hit the green nicely, and both stopped quickly as well. I found that turf interaction was good. I felt like the flights were good. And if I'm honest, I kind of started to like the clubs a little bit more on the golf course. They didn't, again, quite fit my um, personal preference on feel and sound, but they weren't overly ridiculous either. I wasn't hitting a shot and, and embarrassed by the sound, looking at my playing parts thinking, oh, that sounds too loud. That wasn't the case. They actually sounded good when I flushed them out the middle. Um, performance so far was, was good. I liked, I played a couple of little dinky shots. I played some controlled shots, and all of them kind of worked a little bit, to my surprise. I didn't airmail any, I didn't hit any 50 yards too long, which I thought I was going to do, but I respected the loft and I respected the fact that they were going to go long. So when I'm looking at the product from here and I'm looking at kind of who they're aimed at, I'm seeing that, you know, guy who wants to hit the ball further, guy wants a little bit of help. Where I fear for this product is in the four iron, the five iron, I just don't see that person generate enough speed to get that shot up in the air and to get it to fly correctly. And that's where maybe this set, set stops at a five iron and then the rest of the set starts to build in with hybrids because that's the only way I see it really realistically working for most golfers who'd be using this a slightly higher handicap. Let's answer some of your questions about the M4 and then we'll give it a final conclusion.
Okay, so questions coming in from you guys, and really it's the guy who has M2 irons. Does he need to move into this? So M2 irons have had two generations worth, and then they brought out the M4. Truth be told, I think these are so similar to M2, it's unreal. Apart from having a facelift, and possibly, aesthetically, just that little bit nicer looking, I don't see much of a difference in performance from when I've tested this and M2 iron. Um, the same noise, the same noise problems, whether a little bit loud and clicky, similar flight characteristics, similar distances. So unless you're just looking for a club that looks newer and looks a little bit more of a fresh M2, I don't think you're going to see a massive difference. Um, the big thing as well, talking about M4 versus M3, is why is the M4 cheaper? This was a question that was firing around after the first look first hit. And truth be told, I'm not entirely sure. I feel that this is just as good a quality, as good as look, if not better look, packed with as much technology as the M3 iron. So I don't see why there is that much of a difference in price. And we're talking $100, I see, or £100. And I also feel the guy with M4 irons might even get these slightly cheaper because is that golfer going to pick the 4 iron and the 5 iron when really it's a club that they might not be able to use? So you can almost go 6 iron down to pitching wedge. So already you've brought the cost down. And the cost that you save, you pack into some good quality wedges and some good hybrids and you've got yourself a decent set. So I don't see why there's much of a price difference. But really, I, the golfer that's going to be using these, take advantage because if you're going to get these a little bit cheaper, then fill in your bag with wedges and some hybrids, and you've got a pretty, pretty awesome set to be helping you improve your golf for this year. Okay, so the conclusion, M4 irons. And the first question I've been carrying on with this review theme is, would they go in my bag? Not this style, because they're a little bit too chunky. They're far too strong for me. Um, I think there's some benefits to an iron like this. I think they're very confident building. I think for the guy who wants to hit his, his seven iron or her seven iron longer and further than the mates that they play with, yes, this is the set because the loss are strong. You know, you're going to hit it further. So this seven iron isn't a seven iron, it's a five iron. We've talked about this before. But in fairness to the club and to the designers, they've stripped enough weight down to the bottom and they're managing to make the ball go high enough with enough descent angle to still get the ball to stop. That's a big skill because... As soon as you start strengthening that loft, they become unplayable to a degree. But these aren't unplayable, they still work. I think they've got levels of forgiveness. Whether the feed, uh, speed slots, face slots are doing loads of magic work, it's hard to really test. But from the miss hits that I hit, I found good performing shots. So, wouldn't go in my bag just because it doesn't quite fit where my game is. But I do believe it has lots of great features for some golfers out there. But really, if you're going to look at getting these, have a look at last year's M2. Have a look at even the year prior to that M2s, because you might pick a, a bit more of a bargain as opposed to the M4s. But don't be put off by trying these as well. I'd love to hear your thoughts down below if you get a chance to try the M4s. Can you hit the long irons? And do they go to the distances that you would like to see? My concerns are the gapping, and my concerns are the sound and the feel that you get from these irons. Thanks for watching, guys. Hopefully you've enjoyed the video. If you have, click that thumbs up button. It's free to subscribe to my channel, so do so by clicking the big red button. Comment below what you think of the TaylorMade M4 irons. I look forward to seeing you soon, and thanks for watching. And that was my full review of the TaylorMade M4 irons.